Uh, next is Paul Orlowski. Now, if you watch television during the, during the strike, during the civil disobedience for those two weeks, there were two people, two BCTF representatives who we saw on television. One was Jenny Sims, and somehow the other was Paul. <laughs> and uh, now, but it must have been the hat. He, and as television goes, he was in the same place at the same time on many occasions. Paul is a long time Kitsilano, well, Paul is now at Kitsilano Secondary School. He's been teaching for 20, 20 years, is it, Paul? 20. This is Paul's 20th year of teaching. He's also a sessional faculty member for us here at UBC. He teaches a number of courses. He's taught a wide range of courses, many of which deal with social justice, most of which deal with social, ju social justice in some way, shape, or form. And I want you to join me in welcoming Paul. And Paul, it's all yours. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Well, for me, uh, a lot of the things have already been said by Ginny and Catherine, so this will be a little bit of a mishmash. And if I kind of ramble <laughs> all over the place, just know that I taught all day at kids, and you might say, yes, <laughs> teachers are exhausted. Listen to them babble. <laughs> they need a deal next summer. Anyway. Um, the implications of the teacher strike for me uh, is the public awareness of an assault not just on public education but on civil society itself. Uh, two cornerstones of civil society are public education and uh, public sector unions or un the trade union movement uh, in general. Um, now we've already talked about a little bit on the assault of on um, public education with working conditions and uh, class sizes up, special needs. Ginny did a fantastic job of getting that onto the in, into the public discourse there. Uh, school closures has been 113 or a little bit more than that. 114. 114 schools have been closed since the year 2001. That got out there and teaching positions that have been lost since Gordon Campbell's Liberals 3,000. 2,700. 2,700. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, thank you for uh, those updates. Anyway, so, uh, you know, obviously something's amiss. Now, in the Harper's uh, Magazine, uh, September, and I'm sure there's a few people in this room that sometimes read Harper's, uh, uh, an article by Jonathan Kozalt talks about still separate, still unequal, and how it's the poor, mostly non-whites that are in the public school system in American cities. Uh, there's uh, the private education movement is, uh, skyrocketing in the United States. I do believe there's a similar trend here, not as far developed as in the United States with the uh, Campbell government. Um, in the debates uh, leading to the last election, uh, the uh, NDP would, critics would say, well, there's not enough money going into the public education, and Campbell and his people would say, we've put more money into education. The word public was always taken away when he answered. When CBC did an analysis, it was, it's true but he's put more money into private education to make that uh, fund a little higher. That rarely gets out into the uh, public discourse. <laughs> anyway, so there is another article uh, that I've looked at in a magazine called The Progressive in the United States, an article by Barbara Miner, Why the Right Hates Public Education. It was a four-page article that came out last year. And uh, well, one of them is, uh, especially with social conservatives, a, a kind of... Uh, fondness for social hierarchies, class, race, gender, you name it. But also there's something about unions, and that leads me to the next point here. Uh, the, uh, the right hates, uh, in the United States in particular, unions because a lot of uh, union members, teachers and not, work for the Democrats, and the Republicans uh, can't stand that. Well, there's something similar here, although by and large the BCT has never endorsed a political party until the last provincial election. I think that's right, eh? We did not endorse any political party, Into, even in the last election. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Still, uh, by and large, more teachers will volunteer their time uh, for one party over the other in BC politics. Uh, so a, a quick look over to unions and uh, the way the media played this out. I teach Civics 11, a, a kind of a new course in BC schools. I mean, there was a civics courses in the 60s and early 70s, but it, then it disappeared and it's come back. And it's only in a few schools right now. And one of the things I do there is talk a little bit about the history of uh, trade unions. And there's just a couple of key points that very few people know about that if they did, it wouldn't be uh, such a surprise the way this all played out. Because in September, I went through uh, the, 
the Trade Union Act of 1872, John A. Macdonald did, it just made it legal for uh, people to join unions so they weren't going to jail like they were before that in Nova Scotia, Eastern Canada. And uh, then in 1946, the RAND decision just said that, uh, hey, uh, if, t if unions do an illegal strike, we can find them, we can, no problem. And that did happen, as you know. And the media made it like, wow, we're going to show them. But this was just something that's happened in the late 1960s and early 70s. Because there sometimes was an impasse between employees and employers, the mediator appeared. Mr. Vince Reddy, somehow seen as like the uh, superstar of all time, when in fact, look, if he was ever going to go hard against Gordon Campbell too much, he wouldn't get chosen to do the next one. But at any rate, these are just, these are just key aspects of how uh, negotiations occur. And if there's a breakdown, it's just something in Canadian history. Workers can strike. And uh, they took that away, but we did what uh, Ginny's called a political protest. And uh, in the Civics 11, the so-called political protest that we did, you know, I teach uh, the three types of, uh, it's all based in ideology, the good citizen. Uh, the conservatives have a vision, the liberals do, and so does a, sort of a progressive radical left. And the conservative is more in a, uh, obey authority and uh, be patriotic and this kind of thing. A more liberal version is participate. And the radical left is, you know, uh, protest for change, work hard for, for change. And, you know, there's aspects of all three that I do. And when I'm teaching Civics 11 or any course, even here at UBC, I don't try and brainwash, but I try and get the language to a certain level where we can see where conservatives feel uh, on certain issues, on a social spectrum or economic spectrum, the liberal or the radical. And when I came back into the class, the students had seen, okay, the teachers did. They just went sort of more to a radical left uh, position, which is rare for teachers because, as Ginny pointed out, by and large, they're law-abiding. And, uh, and ha they had been somehow radicalized to, do, to break the law, not a, what teachers are generally fond of doing, but they did en masse. And, uh, the students said when we came back in, hey, so the teachers became kind of like the good citizen according to a radical point of view. And uh, they were right. And these are kinds of things like I feel in the Civics 11 courses and maybe the teacher ed, the language is at a certain level, but it's not out there in the general public. It could be, it should be. It actually would, uh, I think, would, would help balance things. And, uh, and one, of the re you know, one of the reasons that that's uh, um, a problem is because of the media. And that brings us to another thing which a lot of people in this room might be aware. The media maybe don't always have uh, civil society or the workers for sure, uh, the interests of the workers in, in, uh, in mind when they're writing their, uh, their articles and their headlines in particular. But I would say the implications of the teacher strike was that the public has at least been made aware that public education is being compromised that uh, teachers are actually feeling a little stressed, a little uh, overworked, a little exhausted. I can attest to that. Um, but the question is, and it still remains to be seen, George Orwell says if the, uh, the lie is repeated enough, it becomes the truth. So I think it's the next summer we're supposed to see whether uh, Gordon Campbell will finally honor this long tradition of uh, negotiations between workers and employers. But he may not. He may, and will the public stand up and say, come on now, you're really being unfair? I'd like to think so. But uh, I think Gordon Campbell is, has some connections with uh, Can West and, and the uh, media sources here in the Lower Mainland. We'll see what happens. Uh, now, one of the things that does happen with such a situation, an implication of this strike, was that the media was almost seen as a hegemonic device something to, to show that the interests of the elites are the interests of everybody. Um, they had to play that carefully, and I knew something was going to happen, although it turned out to be Vince Reddy coming up with uh, somewhat, I would call, lame recommendations. But we had to go with it at the time. But uh, Michael Smith, Monday night, uh, Paul Wilcox, Vancouver's son, the next morning, Michael Smith writes for the province and does CKNW. They all said right away, Campbell's got to negotiate. Wham. And that, then we knew they couldn't carry on. The public was supporting the teachers. The media could not demonize us. They tried. They tried to demonize Ginny a little bit. They tried to demonize uh, the BCTF. And I do want to say, uh, although teachers are the most trusted uh, you know, uh, voice on what's going on in the classroom, the teachers are the BCTF. And uh, it is a very democratic organization. And uh, 
you know, by and large, the vast majority of teachers are proud to be members of the BCTF. Uh, my last uh, point before I uh, turn it over is in uh, California last night, uh, some of you know this, Arnold Schwarzenegger tried to attack public sector unions and uh, uh, especially teachers with two, uh, two of his four bills were specifically targeted at public ed. He thought he was going to pull it off. California people, the public got together and said enough of this and stop the Terminator dead in his tracks. California <laughs> is seen as a bellwether for what we can expect to see across the U.S. and perhaps Canada. Canada is much more right now on a liberal or progressive tra trajectory than the United States. That can change. Last night what happened in California could be the sign of uh, that maybe it's time even for the American public to withstand the assaults on civil society, and we can only hope so, and the same thing happened up here too. Thank you.